Hi everyone, it's great to have the chance to talk to you about our research today. This talk is about learning to separate audio sources um, into their different components and we're going to do this by both using vision and even using agents that can move around to do this task better. So this task of audio source separation means to separate a mixed set of sounds into their component sounds. So a great example of this that humans do all the time is nicknamed the cocktail party effect, where despite being in a very busy environment, maybe with many people speaking at once and other sounds going on in the background, we're still able to focus and listen to the voice of say one individual. So we're able to isolate that sound. And in other words, we do source separation in order to follow a conversation in a busy place. Now, this kind of functionality would be important not only for this very example, but also generally both in augmented reality, where we'd like to bestow kind of superhuman hearing to people who could focus on things in a busy place, but also in robotics or even in video indexing, where it's important to be able to isolate different sounds in order to understand the video content better. Now, there's been a resurgence of work looking at audio source separation, specifically with guidance from vision. And this means that by looking at the video frames associated with the sounds, one can better perform this separation task, which of course makes sense because if you think about watching the lips of a person move as they're speaking, this would help you to isolate which of the sounds belong to them versus sounds that, sounds that belong to some other source. And indeed, there's been a great deal of work in the last several years exploring new machine learning based approaches to tackle this problem with vision and audio together. So what I'm about to show you is a new approach for audio source separation and video where the key ingredient will have to do with a facial prior. So let me motivate that first with this little quiz where first I'll play a voice and you have to guess which of these five people is, uh, does the voice belong to. So here's a first example. And I'm thinking you can probably guess. This one may be easy. There's one woman in this set of five faces, and that was likely her voice. Here's another example. Being, um, cool. and, and you can see that uh, in, in daily life. And here you may have a guess. It is, in fact, face number four. And why can we guess this at all? Well, because properties about the person's voice are actually visible in their face, right? Things like gender, age, nationality, uh, body weight, all of these things affect the voice that we hear. And so there's an ability to make this kind of matching. And in fact, this cross-modal kind of embedding I, uh, possibility between voices and faces has been explored for person identification in some recent work. In order to verify you know, which face goes with which voice, these kind of properties could be learned. But here's our idea. These two tasks, audiovisual speech separation and this cross-modal face-to-voice matching, are actually mutually beneficial. So this is a key insight that we're going to pursue in the work I'm showing you now, where we expect that if we've done a good job of separating the sound sources from a source video, then the voice tracks will be more distinctive and you know, properly separating each individual voice so that we could better learn such a cross-modal embedding. And vice versa, if we've learned well this cross-modal embedding, then we'll have this kind of prior that I was illustrating a second ago about what the voice likely sounds like, given the face, such that we can more robustly separate the proper soundtrack for that face. Okay, so this is the basic idea that we want to pursue, and we call the idea or the approach visual voice, because we're going to use the ability to visualize uh, what the voice may sound like from the face appearance in order to promote better speech separation. So we'll jointly learn to do separation as well as form these cross-modal embeddings. So what that means is then we'll be able to take mixtures of speech, so a waveform that has multiple overlapping voices, and then model both the lip motion and the facial appearance of each speaker such that we can separate the speech for the both of them and that the at the same time, the fact that we are learning about this association of their face and their voice will assist in this separation process. So let me then go into some more detail about the approach for visual voice. 
there's two main things we want to look at. So first is we're going to have a core network that does the audio separation. So I'll describe that first. And then we'll put that together with a series of losses that are going to try and capitalize on this consistency that I'm talking about between the faces and the voices. So first, the separation network. We are going to look at the lip motion. And as, as, as has been shown in some recent work, you know, a great place to look in the face in order to synchronize what you expect for the audio with what you're seeing in the visual is the moving lips as people speak. And so here we take some 3D convolutional features uh, and summarize the lip motion in the region of interest around the mouth. And we'll get visual features there. And then we look at the full face of the input and extract a visual feature that will be learned there. Uh, and you can think of these as attributes. They're not named attributes, but just properties of the face like age, gender, nationality, etc. implicitly will be available in this ResNet feature coming out of the, the face image. Now these visual features are fused, and then on the audio side, we'll have the mixed sound coming as input, mixed, meaning it comes from at least two different sound sources, and we'll represent its spectrogram. Uh, and then we'll use a UNET style architecture for the audio visual processing, in which we have an encoder and decoder, and we'll be able to align those visual features against the audio features. And require that the output of this separation network after the decoding produces a complex mask, a mask the same size as the spectrogram that we can apply to it in order to filter for the voice of interest, meaning one of the speakers in the video. Okay, so that's the audiovisual speech separator network. You can think of this as a component coming in with which we can um, do the separation task itself, but now let's talk about how we learn to do the separation well. And here our approach for visual voice is a self-supervised multitask training kind of framework. And let me break it down from left to right here, where we'll have two pairs uh, at a time during training. Uh, one pair consisting of person A and a person B, for, from which we can look at their lip motion and we can observe their mixed sounds by mixing the, the voices from these two instances in the training set. That yields a spectrogram, now this is the spectrogram as input to the separator network I just showed you that we will take and produce complex masks for the speaker A and speaker B. Okay, and that can be supervised by the fact that these two faces are coming from two different videos during training and we know what the sole voices are for both A and B. But now we'll also couple uh, B with a separate sample from individual A coming somewhere else in that same video. And here, too, we'll have the mixed spectrogram, and we'll perform the speech separation, and we'll have two other corresponding masks for person A and person B for that different speech pattern. Okay, so, so far, this is using the speech separation, using the lip motion and um, the audio in order to do the separation, and we can, uh, um, after masking those original mixed spectrograms, come up with the separated spectrograms for each of those voices. Now that'll be trained using, so far, this mass prediction loss, again, because we know what the true sounds should be. And then we now get into the part of leveraging that mutually beneficial task of cross-modal matching. And so from the spectrograms you see here, which are decomposed, meaning our estimates of the separate sounds for these training uh, voices, then we'll extract audio features for each of these voices. Okay, so you think of these as the vocal attributes. And now in this cross-modal embedding space, we'll say that, okay, for the instances belonging to the same face, meaning the ones A, we want those to be close together in this embedding, and those that are from different faces, A versus B, these should be further apart. And that's a speaker consistency loss about the voice being consistent when we separate it in the first clip versus when we separate it in a, a later clip. And then finally, we have a cross-modal matching between the face images and their features for those training individuals and their voices that we're separating in this whole framework. And so again, here we want the face to go well with the voice that is separated for it and vice versa. Okay, so this is a multitask framework. There's losses that I've just enumerated, three of them. 
uh, the mass prediction loss, the cross-modal loss, and the speaker consistency losses. And so we'll be optimizing all of these together in order to achieve that mutual benefit between doing good separation and doing good cross-modal matching between voices and faces. So I've just described this approach that we call visual voice. Let me now show you some qualitative examples, and then we'll briefly look at the quantitative results as well. And in each of these examples, I'll play the original clip, and then I'll show you what our algorithm pulls out for a separated voice in the first case or a separated voice in the second case. So here's our first original clip. If you're talking am I mean now, am I gonna speak I gave my you piece? full credit for that. Am I going to speak my piece or not? Go am ahead. I going to speak my piece or not? Go ahead. Okay, because you want to interview me. I ain't interviewing you. You want to talk to me. I don't want I don't worry about talking Floyd, to you. You want to talk to me. go ahead. I'm waiting on you. Okay, so we all know well how often people can talk over each other. Here's just one example. Now let's look at what happens when we separate it. First, we'll separate the voice for the left speaker. I gave you full credit for that. Go ahead. Okay, and let's move Go to ahead. the second speaker, separated here. No, 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 I did not. No, I did not. No, I did not. Are you gonna let, are you gonna let me speak my piece? Am, am I gonna speak my piece? Am I gonna speak my piece or not? Am I gonna speak my piece or not? Okay, because you wanna interview me. Okay, so you see that example, we had two voices coming in um, in a real, you know, real video. They're mixed and we're able to separate each of them quite cleanly. Here's a slightly different kind of example where there's one voice, but it's in a cluttered, busy environment, and we want to be able to separate all that background noise away. So this is speech enhancement. Let's hear the original first. We haven't measured it, but it's cut down the noise um, to a point where uh, we have the right vibe that it's an action kind of place. Okay, and then here is the output once it's enhanced. We haven't measured it, but it's cut down the noise. Um, to a point where uh, we have the right vibe that it's an action kind of place. Okay, so it's disregarding those other sounds in order to hear that foreground voice. And one more sample, perhaps one you've seen this very one or you've experienced in your own life living on Zoom. Um, here's the original video. Um, I would be surprised if they do. The, um, pardon me. Pardon me. My apologies. <laughs> What well, is this going to be for the region? So that's the original. North, uh, and now we'll hear the separated, um, um, North corrected Korea, part, North, uh, which is here. Um, I would be surprised if they do. The, um, pardon me. Pardon me. My apologies. <laughs> My apologies. North, uh, sorry. Um, North Korea, North, uh, South Korea's policy choices on North Korea have been severely limited. So there too, pulling out the, the selected speaker and disregarding the background noise. All right, so those were just in the wild kind of examples. We pulled, applied the method, and it worked. Um, let us now look at some general numbers on some common benchmarks. So here I'm showing you two tables. The one on top is for speech separation. That means there's two speakers and we want to hear one at a time. And then the bottom chart is for speech enhancement, which is like that previous example where there's a speaker and then there's other background sounds. In this case, they're taken from audio set, which is a, um, an existing ac acoustic video data set. So all these numbers are looking at different metrics to say how good is and how correct is the separated speech, because here we have the ground truth that should be produced. And we're looking at a series of different baselines, like audio only, what if you pursue this task only with the audio stream, AVCOM, which is an existing approach um, for doing this task, and then ablations of our model, looking only at the static face, we're looking only with the lip motion, and then our full model. And what you can see is that there's quite consistent results with improvements for um, these tasks by our model, both for separation and enhancement, and both of these are on the Vox Celeb 2 data set. Furthermore, if you look left and right, we've tried it in two different ways. One where it's just the raw video as it's provided. We call this reliable lip motion because we are able to find the mouth and give that lip motion as input. And then on the right-hand side, we corrupted the lip motion in different ways, such as giving, introducing a lag or occlusions so that it would suffer, which of course does make all the methods decline in accuracy, um, but we actually accentuates our advantage 
to some degree because we are able to leverage that prior on what the face looks like to say what the voice is probably that accompanies it, even when that lip motion signal, which can be quite strong, gets corrupted. And it would get corrupted in normal ways in real real world data because of lag, buffering, and video, um, or even just occlusions of objects being in front of the speaker's mouth. So these are quite encouraging results kind of across the board for being able to perform these tasks. And we've also taken this method, visual voice, to tackle here are five different data sets for speech separation or enhancement. Um, and I'll point you to the paper to look at the details of all these data sets and, and comparisons, but essentially what we're seeing is that we can perform more reliably than state-of-the-art methods for all five of these data sets. Um, and final result here that I wanted to show is twisting it the other direction, right? So really the focus has been audio source separation, but you know that in the method, we're also doing some cross-modal matching. And so what we finally did in this last result was to test the verification result on Voxeleb. Verification meaning saying if the voice and the face go together or what's the right identity for it. And here we're comparing to an existing approach um, in, called learnable pins in a very apples to apples way. And so what we're seeing is that the byproduct really of this joint learning is a good cross-modal embedding in order to match the, the correct face and voice, right? And that's showing that having the ability to do good separation is indeed informing our ability to do this matching. One more hint of that is available if we look at the TSNI plots here. These are just projections um, from the learned embeddings for 15 different speakers from this data set. Where on the left, we're color coding them by gender, male and female, and on the right, we're color coding them by the people's identity. Now I should stress, these parameters, gender, identity, they're not available at any, at any time for training this approach. And yet, this embedding is learning to cluster among them because of its ability to isolate voices and faces as they go together from this mixed audio during training. Okay, so what I've shown you so far is our latest approach to try and tackle audio source separation using computer vision. And this is a video problem. We're handed a video, we come back with the audio tracks to say what the different um, sound sources are once they're separated. What I wanna point out though about this problem itself is that we should consider it a passive approach. Passive in that we're taking video as input, it's pre-recorded. There's nothing we can do to change the video itself. Uh, so that means, you know, there's no motion of the camera or microphone that is available and we're, we're going to deal with the video we're handed. Now, this is a very meaningful problem setting because as I hope those examples just showed, where we have video and we want to do this separation. But what I wanna explore next in this talk is how we could turn from a passive problem setting to an active one. And I mean an active one in the active perception sense of embodied artificial intelligence or having agents that can control their own observation collection, meaning moving the camera, moving the microphone in a way that will aid in solving this task well. Okay, so that's the next goal. I wanna consider active audiovisual source separation. And here we're defining this task to be one where we let the sound and vision guide a navigating agent, so a mobile agent's motion, in order to better separate the target monaural latent audio. So target monaural latent audio, this just means the, the true, the pure ground truth sound um, that was emitted, uh, and that's to contrast it with the spatialized sound that anyone would hear once that sound is emitted in a particular environment or room. Okay, so the goal is to be able to recover that and the power is that if we have a mobile agent, the agent can decide where the camera and microphone should go next so that this task becomes easier. And that's what this cartoon shows at the bottom. So I think we have a mobile robot and it's gonna see some egocentric video, video stream like the RGB in the top right. It's gonna hear some spatial sound, binaural audio, left and right channels of audio. That's mixed because it's hearing all sound sources in the environment at once. And in my cartoon here, there's three sound sources, S1, S2, S3. And suppose the target is that the agent really just wants to listen to S3. Then the correct output would be just the sounds coming from S3. 
And the question is, how should the robot move so that that output is achieved most readily? And in this example, you know, if the agent starts at the starred position, it's choosing a path that goes around to the back of this kitchen island because if it stands where it started, you know, it's very much hearing the mixture of all three sounds, the source that we care about and the other distractors. But if it moves over here, not directly to the source that it wants to listen to, but behind it, it'll hear that source more clearly while blocking the effects of the distractor sound S1 and S2. So that's the intuition in this cartoon of what we want to achieve, agents that can move to do sound source separation better. Now, in order to explore this, we've been relying on our audio simulation platform called Sound Spaces that we developed last year. It's publicly available. What it is is a counterpart to 3D visual assets that have been explored like Matterport 3D and Replica where you have real world scans of these environments and now you can push a camera around arbitrarily within them to collect egocentric observations. But now with Sound Spaces, we also have uh, accurate acoustically correct sound rendering to accompany those visual renderings. And these are accurate in the sense of respecting the geometry, the materials, um, all the major surfaces and the respective source and receiver locations that you wish to hear from which you wish to hear. And we'll render binaural sound in real time for any waveform of your choice using sound spaces. So this is a platform that's read, uh, freely available that we created in some prior work. Now it's gonna allow us to explore this active audiovisual source separation problem I just mentioned. Once you have sound spaces in play, that means you can think of at any of these yellow positions, placing your camera and microphone and placing a source or sources elsewhere and then hearing them properly, meaning both at the correct intensity and with the correct directionality at your um, receiving position. Just to give you a sense of what that data is like, here is a short video that is an excerpt from a Matterport environment with sound spaces playing sounds for a piano and a smoke alarm. And you'll see an agent moving around and you should hear how the sounds do change. Okay, so you could hear both how these sound sources do get louder as you get closer to them. If you listen offline from our, directly from our website with earphones, you'll get that binaural audio experience where the piano would hear, you would hear the piano from the left um, as opposed to the right. Okay, so with this platform then, we can have reproducible experiments and train agents to do audiovisual tasks which we've done in the past for navigation, here I want to talk about our approach for source separation in this active perception setting, which we call move to here. And there's two main ideas um, for move to here. It's going to have two parts to the model. One is, uh, again, a separator network uh, related to what I showed you before, but now keep in mind the input consists of binaural audio, multi-channel audio, having that spatial element. And this is going to be a network that's trained to do separation and to improve separation over time with an acoustic memory refinement module. Okay, so that's one part of the approach is some engine to do the audio separation. Now the other part is a controller. And this is the, a policy that's being trained for the behavior of this agent and how it should move around in the space in order to solve the separation task well. And this controller will take as input the current estimate of the separated audio for the source of interest, as well as the visual observations over time. And then it's going to build a, a deep reinforcement learning loop here where it'll be choosing actions and the actions are move, movements in the space. So go right, go left, go forward, and so on. And at every time step, it's choosing an action, how to move. At the same time, it's then getting the new observations from the environment as a result. And all the while during training, we're rewarding correct separation. So we're not rewarding it for getting to where the source is, even though that may, in some cases, that is useful. We're rewarding it for properly separating the sounds. And so what you can expect is that it learns intelligent behavior of how to position itself in the environment 
with respect to furniture or walls or different kinds of rooms or different kind of objects so that it can hear better the thing that it wants to hear. Okay, um, and so we're able to um, place then an agent in one of these 3D scenes, and I'll show you one example where there's three sources, speaker one, speaker two, I have some music. Okay, but what the agent hears is the mixture of all those things. So the mixed binaural at the start. Okay, so the agent's hearing this mixed signal, but now it's going to start moving through the space according to the learned policy in order to position itself to hear just the source, which here we've just chosen to be S1. So the one with the green circle in the middle top down map. On the right-hand side is what the agent sees as it moves around, okay? And so the agent's looking for a, a sweet spot where the separation quality is better, and it's given a limited time budget to achieve this. So here we'll see it start to move, and here on the right again is what it sees, and we have the kind of bird's eye view of where it's going. You'll notice it does travel to one of the target source, but staying at that source need not be the best place to hear it. In fact, in this case, it finds that the best place to land is beside this wall, which serves some kind of blocking effect to hear less from source number three while hearing better source number one uh, and less of source number two. Okay, so this was an agent learning how to move in the space and the final predicted target audio sounds like so. Here it is. Okay. So we've quantified these results um, against a number of different baselines, things like turning the camera to the direction of the arrival of sound, or doing spatial exploration of the environment to get good samples all over, or rotating around. And in short, move to here, the approach we've just designed is showing some promising results, both in environments with sounds we've heard before on the left, as well as environments with sounds we have not heard before. Okay, so you move intelligently to disentangle target sounds from the other distractors. So in closing, what I've shown you is our latest work in audiovisual source separation. And we've tackled it on two fronts. First, in a passive way, just meaning video, that we have not captured but we want to parse for the different speakers. And then in the active scenario, which is a new task for embodied AI, where we have agents that need to move about a space to hear things more clearly. And along the way, I, I briefly mentioned the contribution of the sound spaces environment, which is available for this kind of work um, with um, audiovisual perception and active perception. And everything I've shown you today is done with a lot of collaborators. Here I'm highlighting the um, Rohan, Sognik, Ziad, Chanan, and Unat, who are key contributors and first authors on uh, the work that I shared today. Thanks so much for your attention and be glad to have your questions.